what is going on with the laser EPG I bet you're all wondering well here it is and this isn't even the EPG this is the magnetic gas processor <laughs> in pieces and these are the parts I've received so far I just got this yesterday this is a voltage intensifying circuit from Tony Woodside at globalcast.com if you want to pick one up for yourself I'm not very good with electronics so that helps me out tremendously thank you Tony I got some different watt lasers here a 10 milliwatt and 2 watt when Stan's talking about his laser EPG he talks about using a 10 watt but a 10 watt's really expensive so I figured if that laser beam's bouncing around in there, the difference is just a couple milliseconds between my 2 watt and his 10 watt. I've got a 100% mirror and a 50% mirror, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that'll get my laser beam in the chamber and then keep it bouncing around. I thought I was going to be able to use these crystal oscillators because I want my laser beam oscillating at one million times per second but I don't know if I'm going to be able to use those so I gotta figure out a different way to pulse my laser got a neon sign transformer for the spark gap for that chamber right over there you've seen that in my last video and I've got a oscilloscope I purchased pretty cheap on eBay um, lots of LEDs, uh, ultraviolet, infrared, and green. And I was going to use these strips for the LEDs, but they only hold six each, and I need a lot more than that. And if you guys are wondering what this is, while I was looking for LEDs on eBay, I found this guy. This is pretty freaking cool. It's a flexible 50-50 RBG strip. And I've tried this in my last video, but it didn't come out. Um, you still can't see it. When that's on white, you can select different colors here. And when you select white, all three of the LEDs are on and there's red, green, and blue on all at the same time. So I got that guy. Might get a strip that's a little bit longer to add to the uh, gas processor on top of the strips. I'm gonna use the strips and all these LEDs but I thought I would wrap that around it just to help out. And then we've got stainless steel rods. That's where we're going to be stripping the electrons in the gas processor. Got a four inch acrylic tube and some four inch plexiglass cut. I'm still waiting on a two inch tube which will house these. My LEDs will be between that chamber and this outer chamber. Here's the metals I'll be testing first. Got some neodymium rods, some Alnico magnetized and non-magnetized rods, and these cost me a pretty penny. These are cobalt rods and it was quite the effort to get them from the company they wanted references and stuff but I got them 99% cobalt so I'll be messing with that these are for later this is a humidifier an ultrasonic humidifier and I bought that for the component inside this is another one. This is a ultrasonic toothbrush. And 
this guy had just a motor in there with a offset weight and vibrates really fast. But I wanted those components because there are a lot of videos on YouTube about how to improve the production of your uh, HHO cell, whether it's plates or tubes. If you add one of these oscillators, um, what that does is it will condense your bubbles into larger bubbles. Um, it basically shakes your whole unit and exposes more surface area on your plates or your tubes to the water so that you've got uh, more production, basically. Alright, so here's my plan for all of that stuff. I have some argon that's out in the garage. Um, that'll be the gas I start with, but I may also want to try HHO and something else. Who knows? Um, so, your argon goes through your gas processor, and that's controlled by your voltage intensifying circuit and aided by your LEDs, stripping electrons off of your gas. That gas that's been stripped of electrons goes into your ionizing chamber where there's a spark gap. And then that, those metallic particles are bonding to your gas. And that spark gap's controlled by your neon sign transformer. Um, that combination is going into my magnetizing chamber and what I'm going to do is I've got a valve on each side I'm going to shut it off let the pressure build up inside shut this one off magnetize it undo this valve and fill my container and repeat that process until I have the desired pressure in my laser EPG so this is it this is going to be my test model it's going to be a linear piece of pipe, 50% um, mirror on the laser side, 100% mirror on the other, and that laser just bounces back and forth. I'm going to pressurize it with the gas. I don't know the uh, PSI yet, but I want to use a small uh, tube here because that laser beam is so fine, I don't want my EMF field to have to travel very far. So. I'm thinking a quarter inch or a half inch wide for that reason. Now, how does the laser EPG work? I'm going to attempt to tell you here. Since my video is on Stan giving his example and his lecture on his laser EPG got taken down due to copyright infringement. Oops. So, you pulse that laser in this chamber that contains your magnetic gas. And these are pickup coils on the outside. When that laser strikes the atom of the uh, magnetized gas, there's a nucleus, here's your electron, that electron wants to move out a uh, orbit. And I don't know all the technical stuff, but this electron starts to spin faster, and because of that, um, creates a larger magnetic field. So that's where we'll be getting our power from the photon interaction with the magnetic gas. Stan says that as this laser bounces around in here, it'll strike this atom multiple times, and with each strike of the laser, um, it has an effect on the atom. And with enough photon energy, this will keep going out and out and out, creating a stronger and stronger magnetic field. And then when we shut this off during our pulse, that will collapse. So you'll create it, collapse it, create it, collapse it. And that's where we'll be getting our EMF interaction with our pickup coils. Something else that's really cool, Stan was talking about on... Uh, Preventing back EMF or minimizing back EMF. Um, the gas remains stationary in the laser EPG. 
We're not trying to move it. The laser does not move the gas. So when the laser comes through and strikes that atom, and that EMF field develops, it's developing from the point of the laser strike on out. And it goes with the configuration of our coils. So you have minimal opposition here. Basically just squeezes between your copper wires. In theory, anyway. With the pump EPG, you're pumping the gas and you're actually moving the gas. And that EMF field of the gas is in opposition of your coil arrangement. You're trying to move this, e this uh, EMF along your coil. And what that does is it creates opposition. It's in uh, the opposite direction of your coils and the EMF that they create. So there's little resistance and it may slow uh, the speed. But also this is limited to the speed of the pump whereas the laser goes at the speed of light. And this chamber can be as long as you need it. My uh, test uh, test laser EPG is probably only going to be one or two feet long just to see if any power comes out of it and I will adjust it um, as necessary alright um, I guess that's it post your comments uh, sorry about the shaky video this is just with a um, iPhone I'll be posting some videos in the description on how to make a strong electromagnet um, an elect yeah an electromagnet um, how they make neodymium magnets and all I really wanted to show you on that is that it takes just a couple of milliseconds uh, to magnetize something so it's not like you gotta have this sit overnight or anything you can produce this in real time pretty pretty quickly and also just a link to something I found on laser photon absorption of an atom so you guys can understand that better. So that'll all be in the description. Alright, I wanted to thank everybody for uh, all the work they're doing. I wouldn't know what I was doing if uh, everybody else wasn't doing what they're doing. So thank you. And thank you for all the recent subscriptions. You have compelled me to make this video an update and uh, to keep working on this so thank you for the support and i'll talk to you guys later take care